2022. Happy New Year, Shannon. Happy New Year, Paul. Welcome to our annual tradition, our New Year's Happy Hammy New Year special. This is our very first one recording in the same room. Oh, I know, in the same house, in your live from Polygia Studios. <laughs> <laughs> Turn left at the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, I made the cross-country move in 2021 to finally share an abode with the lovely Shannon Q. Mm, poor bastard. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor bastard. And so we were able to have our very first Happy New Year special together, which is awesome. It is awesome. Now I get to see your beautiful face in person. And what you do shots. <laughs> you already started shots, too. Well, what hasn't changed is that this is a little more casual uh, Hammonig News the episode than normal. So this is more of our just straight reactions and having seasonal fun that Ken Ham would normally give us around New Year. Ken had a tradition where he would film either a special edition of Answers News or he would film himself wandering around elsewhere and, and just generally Ken doing something fun, like making fudge one year. Yes, yes, fudge. <laughs> <laughs> the OGs know what that means. <laughs> Check our merch. We may well have a fudge shirt by the time this comes out. <laughs> Did he even do one this year? Well, that's the problem. The last time Ken Ham recorded was November 26th when he and his wife went around looking at the lights at the Creation uh, Museum. And he has literally not been on a stream of any kind since Do November. Do you think we ruined it? <laughs> <laughs> we spent so many years just tearing him to pieces. Maybe, maybe he lost his special streaming sweater that he used to wear. I know. I love that sweater. I like the year that he was dragging around his son-in-law or whoever by the cord. <laughs> So it was very disappointing that Ken Ham himself didn't put anything out. But in the middle of December, my eyes lit up when I saw an upcoming event for a thumbnail, which had Ken's face on it. Mm -hmm. For an upcoming stream on Creation Today called Night at the Creation Museum. We could watch it and see if maybe Ken shows up here. Is it because you and Eric are best friends now? Is that why we're watching this? (laughs) (laughs) Because you guys are besties and you guys text each other memes and shit. Is that what it is? <laughs> it's not because of that. You can see that Eric is dressed as the night guard from the 2006 film Night at the Museum. So he's Ben Stiller. Starring in this, Ben Stiller. In this mock-up production that we're about to enjoy. That's right. Okay. And then Tim Chafee, he's the giant person who writes all of the signs at the Ark Encounter and the Creation Museum. It must be a mentally tasking job. <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited supply of crayons, probably, to be able to do that job. Some, he's sometimes on Answers News now, and perhaps coming up you'll notice that Tim is also the model for one of the evil giants at the Ark Encounter. Is he really? Yeah. <laughs> that, what an honor. <laughs> it's been a big day for him. <laughs> he found out. Oh my God. What's really important is that I have rum and that I'm going to need a lot of rum to get through this. You're already doing tequila shots, so this is probably going to go really well. Maybe you and Eric won't be friends. <laughs> <laughs> we started I with- thought he and I were best friends, but <laughs> I'm not the one he's texting all the time. You guys are like the odd couple. <laughs> It's adorable. <laughs> We've been recording for three hours now and we haven't started, so let's go. Night at the Creation Museum. Okay. A little extra special for you and your family this Christmas. So I took a trip up to the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter and I filmed something that I think you're going to kind of like. Kind of. <laughs> Already, the bar set so high. This is a ringing endorsement. That's the quote for the poster. You'll probably, you, you might kind of like this. <laughs> well, I, I am set. I am set to kind of like this. Now, please don't be too hard on it. Uh, I filmed it on my cell phone and it's not even an iPhone. I think don't be too hard on it all. <laughs> my heart's already like, I don't even want to be mean. Like, he's, he tried so hard. <laughs> it's not even an iPhone, he says. Not even an iPhone. Good, screw iPhones. <laughs> I know, I know some of you guys are probably judging me already. That's like prophecy. <laughs> I just, I feel bad for him now, though, because I feel like he's, like, self-conscious about it. It's weird to apologize for your movie before right? your movie. Like, you'll probably kind of like it. Please don't be mean to me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> bless him. Bless him. No, I don't want to be mean to him. I don't want to be mean to him, but I mean, like, 
I have this sneaking suspicion <laughs> that the content of this film is going to be something that I have a few things to say. <laughs> and I'm sure he would expect that. I'm sure he would. Yeah. It was a lot of fun putting it together, and I want to say a special thank you to Rebecca Pike for inspiring me to have a little extra fun with this than I probably normally would have. So, fun fact, you just mentioned Rebecca Pike. Mm -hmm. Do you remember back when I started my channel and I was dealing with the Creation Today show? Yeah. So, Ben at one point was a co-host on the, uh, the show. I'm, I know Ben. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Me and Ben go way back. I know Ben Shetler, yeah. But after that, towards the end of the run, he had another co-host, Marianne Pike. Okay, yes. So he just mentioned Rebecca Pike. Mm -hmm. So Rebecca Pike is sister to Marianne Pike, and their dad used to run a whole creation ministries in missoula montana where they was a little bit of information for anybody old, who's playing creation that's right. today six degrees of separation that's at home. Right. <laughs> bit of trivia yay that's our goal we want people to have the truth and to know and love their creator okay those are separate things <laughs> cool. think we're ready to roll the film all right is Let's that what we say it. guys roll camera roll roll it I'm hoping this is some kind of generic music that he's got that is not going to get me copyright. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess we'll see. We'll find out. Special thanks to Answers in Genesis. Oh, yes, I'm sure that they have. <laughs> for, for allowing us to promote their shit. That's, <laughs> That's some pretty fancy 3D graphics, actually. Look, I'll give him that. That's not bad. Maybe Eric's stepping up his game. It's not bad. Well, well <laughs> you know, this. <laughs> Remember that stupid video game they had? Yes. With the two different foundations. One was the secular thing and one was on the Bible. Yeah, because so they thought the kids would like what's the equivalent right. of a Galactica game from 1973. So apparently that didn't work out. And they said, well, you know what's going to be more for the kids is building. <laughs> 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 oh, I see what they're doing, though. Look, they've yeah, got the pale do blue dot in Origin of the Species and the God Delusion. And that's the bad foundation. Right. And the Bible's the sturdy foundation. Exactly. You can't even really see that it's the Bible. Uh, they should have moved that chair. And Rebecca Pike's name is right on the screen right oh, now. They should have moved the, the director, chair. That's the director's job. I don't know who the target audience is for this. Me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Obviously. Okay. Because you were alive in 2006 when the original... <laughs> yes, I was alive. <laughs> if this is supposed to be ostensibly before younger people, mm -hmm. they're parodying a film that is now if my math is correct, 16 years old? Oh, don't. Shh. <laughs> we don't need to talk like, about it. This is a hot take pop culture reference. I know. Yeah. We've got building blocks. <laughs> I was trying to read that little sign. No sitting on the rocks. That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> Theoretically, Tim, Tim Chafee, you know, he, since he claims he wrote all the signs in the Creation oh. Museum. <laughs> no, no trespassing. Tim, Exit. That's, that's some, of, some of his best work. <laughs> Nice car. So here we've got a Chevy Camaro in a yellow. It's exactly like Bumblebee. Right? I was just going to say. It's Bumblebee. That's pretty cool. It's a Transformers car. Acting. I know. Oh, I forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> also, you know, we don't normally comment, but you know, look, he's been working out. He's got his butt shots. Jesus, could you guys want to be alone? <laughs> 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 Oh, good. Yeah, I hate to run off like that, but I got a job at a new place. It's some kind of, I don't know, museum or something. Yeah, I could do that. This is going to be important later. Okay. It's better not yes. just be oh, I gotta go. I'll see you at yeah. All right, bye. Hey, Derek? Yeah. Derek Daly. <laughs> Derek Daly. Derek. That's... Follows the classic Marvel daily. alliteration. Alliteration, thank you, <laughs> Peter Parker. Luckily, you have a communication <laughs> major right, here to help it. you. But, <laughs> Why wouldn't his name be Derek Dovin? That would have been <laughs> Derek, <laughs> Derek Dovin. That's that right. Been, that would have almost been less obvious. New night guard around here. Hey, good to meet you. I'm Jim. Pleasure to meet you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jim. Not in the. Not entirely unlike Tim. <laughs> We just want to make sure everybody hit their marks. <laughs> did you bring your shield? I didn't know I needed one. The uh, museum come alive at night or something around here? You never know. No, actually, you, you remind me of Captain America. Did he just American. say that Derek reminds him of Captain America? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> what about young Derek here? <laughs> Captain 
America. Who but, wrote this? Rebecca Pike. She must have a crush on Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote the ass shot in? <laughs> it's America's ass, goddammit. <laughs> That is America's ass. Look, bend over real quick and pretend you forgot something in your car. It won't be necessary to the plot. It doesn't matter at all. I was expecting more Ben Stiller. Ben St oh, I got it. If you put Chris Evans and Ben Stiller next to each other <laughs> and asked me in earnest without ever knowing this happened, which one of these two does Eric Hoven remind That's you right. more of? <laughs> I, I I would have to go. Ben, there's no, ben Stiller's a good looking man. It's not an insult. Man. Absolutely. He's Zoolander. But, like, come on. <laughs> come on, blue, Eric. Give us the blue steel. <laughs> <laughs> trivia. I think the original Night at the Museum. Every time you say trivia, I'm going to drink. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what's happening. Well, if I remember right, the original Night at the Museum had Owen Wilson. Who's in the MCU now as as uh, in the, the Loki series? Yeah, that's true. And it had Ant Man is in Paul Rudd is also in uh, oh, is the Night original at the Night at the Museum. There you go. I don't think I've ever seen the original Night at the Museum. Well, then you're gonna be lost with all these. There'll be references. <laughs> I hope, I hope <laughs> I'm gonna fail all along. this trivia. All the trivia. Oh, I get to do so much mansplaining now. <laughs> I would, I would, I would suggest you not. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. I guess, uh, <laughs> guess I should have been expecting uh, Dick Van Dyke then, huh? That's good, that's good. <laughs> All I'm go. thinking about is whether or not Tim made that sign with that awful looking he turkey. He 100% did. With the turkey? Yeah, Tim would have... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs> that looks like the meal special, but maybe... You never know. <laughs> okay, so Tim made the dragon sign, though. Tim definitely made that dragon Dragons sign. Dragons around the world. Like, that's... For real, though, right? Like you <laughs> That's 100 a real sign. When I went to the Creation Museum, that sign was there. Yeah, that's. that's What's the, the point of this sign? That so dinosaurs are dragons. The only reason a dragon legend could possibly appear is because dinosaurs were actually wandering around Australia. Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> they got yeah. on those logs. Remember how kangaroos got that's on the right. log? The and volcano the blew them. They <laughs> right. blew them into the into space. Yes, they suggest that kangaroos caught an 11,000 kilometer ride to Australia on flying lava. So you're new to the area? Oh uh, yeah, I uh, just had to move here to be close to my son, Ricky. Oh yeah, divorced? Well, separated. It's oh. kind of complicated. Okay. Sorry to hear that. How old is he? He's 10. Oh, that's great. Yeah. They're fun age. Oh, they're black. Okay, I'm calling it by the end of this two-part, I was going to say trilogy, but what do you call them when there's uh, just two-part? Du du duology? duology? Duology. By the end of this duality, <laughs> he's going to reconcile with his wife because he's going to realize that's what Jesus wanted and that's what's best for his family. The only reason he it. believes in evolution is because he's because he's an evil this bad family situation. Bad. <laughs> God damn it. So he's the atheist in this scenario then. Right. Which is why he's separated from his wife and believes in evolution. Yeah. Clearly. Okay. All right. Also, Got ya. even if you're a cleaning staff or mm -hmm. presumably night guards or whatever, you have to sign the statement of faith to work at the Creation Museum. Right. Like, in real life. So it's unlikely that Derek here would, would not <laughs> already hold to the six day creation. Derek Dovind. Oh, he brought maybe. And maybe, Jim Joffe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything on the list in order. All right. And pay attention. Don't fall asleep. Oh, don't worry about that. I've done security for years. There's a reason it's both. Don't fall asleep. Yeah, man, I won't. Do you I'm think good. he's going to fall oh, asleep? Oh, he's totally going to fall asleep. 100%. Just do the list. In order. In order. Don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. And if I were you, I'd leave some lights on. It gets a little spooky here at night. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, have a good night. Don't step on any kids. He's not a bad actor. No, he's doing all right. Attention. Oh, Ben Stiller. <laughs> but is he Chris Evans? <laughs> Did you guys meet Gigantor? Just introduced me to my new job. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> What's that green screen for? Oh, good question. Maybe so that people could take pictures with like dinosaurs or whatever. Uh, it's probably. Like and they tourist probably, trap photos. Right, like they charge $12 or something. Yeah, to, so that you can like have a picture with like a dinosaur or something. Or, or Ken Ham. Or Jesus. <laughs> or Ken Ham, yeah. Ken Ham. Happy holidays from Ken Ham, Jesus, and a dinosaur. <laughs> I would pay $12. To, I don't even send Christmas cards, but That's if that right. was a possibility, I 100% uh, would start sending Christmas cards just to do that. For those following at home, he's walking past where that guy was 
collapsed. The last <laughs> Where that guy died. <laughs> Experience 3D There's like- There's some dude lying on the floor. There's just a random dude on the floor. Why is he lying? Why is he on the floor? <laughs> What's the most reliable dating method, do you think? <laughs> Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm ching. But I'm ching. What do they think the most re reliable dating method is? Christian Mingle. <laughs> Probably. Uh, no, they're they're like, whatever whatever the Bible says. Whatever the Bible is the again. most reliable dating method. That's right. Oh. Okay. All right. Monkey. I remember you. What was your name? Dewey. Dewey. De 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 Deborah. Dex. Dixie. Dexter. <gasps> Dexter. Dexter. <laughs> Dexter is a serial killer. It literally says Lucy right there, though. Yeah, creationists aren't known as big readers. But he's supposed to be an atheist evolutionist. That's right. So, <laughs> is this supposed to be some sort of allegory about how, like, we just ignore the information, Apparently, the evidence that's right in front of us? This is the Creation Museum's version of Lucy, which doesn't look anything like any version of Lucy in any proper museum. I know, she's not even, like, upright. No. Nope. Like, it doesn't make any sense. No, nope. the hips don't work on this one. Hips don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the third law of Shakira. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Oh, naked people. Two naked people. <laughs> Eric spotted them too. Sorry, Derek. See? Derek spotted them too. They know exactly how to write for atheists. <laughs> That's, what... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when atheists see naked people, they call them out. <laughs> oh, good. The emergency exit doesn't work. Yay! <laughs> This emergency exit doesn't open either. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> but also, I'm guessing it's probably a huge problem where a lot of kids around the community people are trying to sneak to in <laughs> without paying. Poor people keep trying to escape. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't even believe in science. <laughs> thought Sean McDowell was being the most convincing atheist <laughs> pretender of the year, but no, it's Eric. You killed my father. Prepare to die. I mean, I, that's something I would do. <laughs> <laughs> I am your father. <laughs> <sighs> You'll be fine. <laughs> it's fine. You'll be fine. It's I Eric know that's not the line. Imitating Zerg. <laughs> First Toy Story 3. <laughs> imitating Star Wars. Sleeping. Yeah, it's nice. If a nap was sleeping, it'd be called sleeping. It's napping. Totally different. Ah. Just 10 minutes. Oh, that's all I need. You could die of a heart attack from the surprise. I know. This shit's about to get real. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm figuring. Hello? Somebody there? Why does he have a flashlight on? Like, all the lights are on, Eric. The lights are on. You can see very clearly where you are standing right now. Ooh, that look at that special effect. <laughs> Shadow puppets. Like somebody's using their hands, yeah, exactly. Next it'll be a bunny. Okay, now he can justify the flashlight. Oh, because there's no light yeah, in the... Yeah, it's dark right. there. All right. <laughs> this is where they get their Amazon packages. <laughs> That's the Fall of Man exhibit. Oh, it's the Fall of Man exhibit. That's where we show how people who uh, believed in evolution did bad things. So, therefore, what? <laughs> 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 evolution's not true that's right even if everyone on earth that ever believed in evolution did bad stuff that wouldn't make it any less true i believed in evolution when i was a christian though no that's impossible <laughs> i was never a real christian no. what, what are you doing here what are you doing here i'm guarding the museum oh you're not you're sleeping i'm not sleeping oh jim gave away the plot i know jim it's supposed to be subtle. I was napping. Technically, there's a difference. You've uh, experienced something like this before, haven't you? A loved one suffering? Yeah. Um, I have my, my mom. Because my dad made her go to jail for tax evasion. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, if God really created the world, you got to ask, why is there so much evil and so much suffering in the world? It hasn't always been like this. Sure it has, man. Animals have been killing each other and suffering for millions of years. Oh, you mean evolution. <laughs> what? Oh, what? You mean evolution. <laughs> so if I smack you right now, like, or if I cause you to suffer in any way, that's, a, that's synonymous with evolution? Let's see about that. Whoa! Special effects on point. <laughs> what happened? What'd you do? Oh! Dexy! No, not Dexy. Lucy. Lucy? Australopithecus afarensis. You know, missing link, one of our ancestors, right? I learned about her in school, yeah. yeah. Only problem is, not a missing link. No? And not one of our ancestors. Says who? <laughs> Says Jim. Says, Says Jim. Jim Joffy. <laughs> And of course, we don't necessarily say that Lucy is a direct ancestor necessarily. It's, we have a common ancestor with Lucy. I'm sure that that'll be represented. I'm well. sure that. <laughs> Australopithecus, southern ape. She's an ape. So are we. So are we, Jim. <laughs> Where are you going with this, Jim? <laughs> God damn it. But of course, yeah. Oh, this is going to start falling apart. Yeah. I was having such a great time. <laughs> I'm going to start getting annoyed now. Now they're starting to be wrong instead of just oh, making poor creative this, choices. This isn't whimsical <laughs> anymore. When they depict her in museums and zoos around the world, oftentimes they put human feet on Lucy. They put human feet on Lucy? They put human feet. They put human feet. <laughs> All of the museums, they're like, this will fool them. <laughs> we'll just put some human feet on her. And then everybody <laughs> thinks that she's that she's part of our lineage. Oh my god. So, it's a good thing that Answers in Genesis is on to that. That's right. <laughs> Thank god. So of course the other fun part they like to do is pretend that Lucy is the only specimen of Australopithecus afarensis that we've ever found. That's true. That's the case. And and, and in every instance right. where you see her outside of this museum, <laughs> right. she's been retrofitted with some human feet <laughs> to um, trick us all. Yeah, so Lucy doesn't Lucy wasn't found with feet, so I don't know what the earliest museums when they found it has, but of course Australopithecus afarensis actually has the, some of the most specimens of anything that we found to this point. And they all had human feet. Put and on no, they don't. All not all. at all. No. Every single one. But when they did find specimens with feet bones, mm -hmm. they found that it had a flat arch like humans, not a rounded arch like apes. Oh, okay. She was likely more upright. Right, and, and spent more time, and on, the more time on the ground than time in the trees. trees. But could spend some of the time on the ground and, and some of the time in the trees. Tree. Well, a that sounds like a transition. I know, right? <laughs> That's what that sounds like. Exactly. But in 2022, you're not going to go to any museum where they've got... Human feet. Human feet on them. It's just that kernel that they can That's use right. to say, ah, they're deceiving you. That's right. That's right. Neat. Fantastic. I love this movie. This is a really great movie. This is the best date. <laughs> this is a great date. <laughs> when do we do the shots? When I'm angry because we're going to run out of <laughs> we shots. Can, we can do the shots. <laughs> Take a look at the skeleton behind Lucy. How many foot bones do you see with her? She doesn't have any. That's right, none. And yet they put human feet. Why? Because that is their, that's their bias. <laughs> that's fucking <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, this is so dishonest. Yeah. What? Okay, so the kernel of truth is the original was found without any foot bones. Correct. And they probably just kind of reimagined what it might be. Right. And noted on the display that she wasn't found with feet, but maybe it's something like this. But then they found multiple other instances of this species. A show of yeah. And many of them had feet. Yeah. And then they updated their information. Correct. Once they did. And, but, but they're just omitting all of that history. Right. And referencing just this instance. Right. And... and a biased way <laughs> <laughs> in order to make it look like people like us are biased. This is one of those. That is fucking beautiful. Mwah, Mwah. Chef's kiss. Fuck your face. It's God one of those damn. Weird it. answers in Genesis things like science changes, therefore it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You can find out new things. We don't want to know any new things. We don't want to know thing. any new no, things. No changing ideas. That's the same <laughs> as lying. Fudge where... sickles. Oh, I shut up. Now I have to drink. Uh oh. <laughs> they always have like 
Well, we can classify this as an ape or we can classify this as human. So if it's 51% and 49%, another thing, doesn't count as a transition. It has to be exactly half one. <laughs> it has to be 50 50. Right. It's got to be, yeah. Well, this is 25% more human like than a chimp, any chimp we know. But evolution doesn't work like that. It's iterative. Right. That's so dumb. Like, so in their mind, in order for evolution to be real, the evidence they would need was one day a great ape gave birth to something with human hands and an ape face. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, some kind of chimera. That's right, yeah. Well, they, they, uh, yeah, famously, the crocodile, remember? They were yes. like, oh, let's, let's, oh Kirk Cameron. <laughs> so they're, that's what they're expecting. That's stupid. And since that time, we have found more specimens of Australopithecus, and we found foot bones. And their feet are very ape-like. Except for the fact that they have flatter arches than most normal chimps do and probably couldn't have been comfortable in trees that much. So it's a slightly more human version. It's a it's a transitional a form. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my gosh. They're not attacking Australopithecus afarensis as a species, they're attacking the one Lucy find. And, and acting as though that everything follows from right. that and that alone. Right. Dumb. Even though he uh, offhandedly said, well, they found others and they were chimpy. Oh like, God. Right. this is why I drink. This is why <laughs> I drink. Just like their skull. The large one there in the middle is Australopithecus. That's the same species as Lucy. And you see the other ones around there, the gorilla, the orangutan, very much the same. Lucy was an ape. What they want you to do is to be walking by with your kids and to be casually saying, oh, yeah, I don't see enough difference here to definitively say evolution happened. They want you to say, oh, these roughly look... Similar. Like me as a lay person, I can't tell the difference between these, therefore no one can tell the difference between these things. That seems silly to me. Because you can visually see the differences. I agree. Erica Gunsa Kibben and I went through this actual exhibit mm -hmm. on a video once, so I would encourage you to go back and watch that. But one of the things that's frustrating here is that Lucy, her skull was almost identical to what a modern chimp right. is. The the differences are in the pelvis yeah. and in the, the legs. Mm -hmm. And that's where the variations were happening, and that's why it's such an important fossil. So when you say, so when this is la, 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 wave your hands and say, look, the skulls were identical, forget the rest. But that's not the important part, though. Exactly. Why aren't they putting the bodies next to each other? Exactly, then? Why right? aren't they putting they're the just, skeletons next to each other? They're trying to say, well, the skeletons were identical, <laughs> so therefore the rest must also be. Must pay, a pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> that's right. The best evidence for Lucy being a missing link it's found in the artwork. No, t no Jim. <laughs> no Jim. No one goes to the museum and says, this museum recreation is the evidence. Mm -hmm. And we're still focusing specifically on the head in right. this case. That's correct. On yeah. the visage. <laughs> when that's not the important part. That's not the variation. The important. But they're like, well, look, different artists make them slightly different colors and their hair's different lengths. <laughs> that's right. So... Obviously, they're taking artistic liberty, which means that you can't trust anything that they're saying. I think that's what it means. But, that's but our museum doesn't do that at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you go to get the truth. We, we took our visage of Lucy from the pages of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Where it specifically says that's right. in Ephesians 19 <laughs> that Lucy was a monkey and not a human. It's showing the artwork. It's showing their worldview. But I don't know, man. Why would so many scientists believe in evolution? It's, it's probably got to be true. You know what? Let's go see what evolution leads to. Leads to? Fuck <laughs> me. <laughs> God damn it. A lot of scientists believe it. But what if it's bad? <laughs> Oh my god. Right. A lot of scientists and chemists probably believe that explosions can be caused a certain kind of way. Yeah. Explosions can be bad. Does that mean if you mix these two chemicals together, they won't explode? Because, I mean, have you thought about what that might lead to? It can't be true. A, a human? Caged as a zoo primate? Oh, evolution leads to racism. Is that what this fucking that's, is? That's what this oh, is. Oh, screw you. So, <laughs> screw you! Unfortunately, they're not actually wrong. So throughout the 1800s and 1900s, they did put people of African descent and Asian descent in circus-type freak show. Right. As if they were freaks of nature for colonialized Western Europeans to look at. That That's a condemnation of colonialism, though. That's not co a condemnation of, like, evolution as being fact. Right. Like, no. people can misunderstand and misuse a multitude of things that are 
Correct. Correct. Or use them as justifications. If they're really going to be going down this road, I don't think that they're going to want to. Like, do you want to go down the road of things that people have used the Bible to justify? Exactly. I don't think so. Like, because <laughs> like, the Bible's going to win the people did the shitty stuff contest 100% of the time. Like, should we have an exhibit? Like, if Christianity is true, look at all the terrible things it will lead right, to. Right, exactly. Because you can totally do that. Have you, have you heard about the Inquisition? <laughs> yeah. Well, the Bible can't be true. Look at what it leads to. Like, if you find the worst example of something, like, that's fallacious. You just, you can't find the worst example of something that someone used something for as a justification. Right. And th- thus... This thing itself isn't true. And lots of terrible things are true. Evolution isn't a terrible thing, though. No. In and of itself, knowing and believing, air quotes, believing in evolution, doesn't motivate you towards any end. No. It doesn't. But they're trying to make that connection. That's exactly right. And then go, and therefore, it's not true. Yeah. Nice job, answers in Genesis. Well done. Yeah, now fuck your face. Whatever. They put him in a cage in a zoo just because they thought he was part monkey? They did. They force you into a position to defend something you would never defend. Right. right. They're saying, well, if you believe in evolution, then you think things like this are okay. No, I don't think things like that are okay. I think things like that are reprehensible and awful. Right. And it has nothing to do with why I believe in evolution. It's like a bait and switch in order to force you in a, into a position where you're no longer arguing the facts of the matter. You're either defending something reprehensible or you are reprehensible in their mind. They put you in that catch-22. Right. When it's not even, it's like besides the facts. And beyond that, frankly, the people I know who are most knowledgeable about the biology of all this think it's reprehensible that we would have gorillas and orangutans. Like I agree, They would yeah. go the other way. It's like, no, shouldn't we have, shouldn't, shouldn't have any of these do. animals in a zoo. Not we should put people in a zoo. It's such a dishonest tactic. If oh. people hadn't have believed in evolution, then the Holocaust wouldn't have happened. And That's world, fucking you know, ridiculous, yeah, though. Right? Evolution is a relatively new theory. Humans have been being bullshit to each other since the beginning of human history. Yep. So that doesn't even like it doesn't even follow. A literal non sequitur. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Fine. When do we get to do this shot? Uh, let's How do it now. Do I have to? I think be? we need to do it now. <laughs> Cheers. Shots, 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 shots. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You like it? Ooh, that's delicious. What's that called? A monkey's lunch. I (laughs) shit (laughs) you not. It's a total coincidence I made it ages ago. Oh, no. It's literally called a monkey's lunch. We are having monkey's lunch. I didn't even think when I made it. I just just knew that I had crumb to banana and balls blue and Baileys and stuff here. (laughs) I was like, oh, those are good. I'll make one of them. Goddamn evolution is just... I'm so not- <laughs> joking, it's just a sheer coincidence. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, all right, monkey's lunch, everybody. They are good, though. That's delicious. <laughs> They're drinking... We're drinking monkey's lunch is what we talk about. People aren't just monkeys. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, I wish I'd planned that. I can't even take credit. (laughs) Let me go get a banana while we're at it. (laughs) Well, sometimes people take things too far, but it doesn't change science. Yeah, you're right. That's an actual good point. We know the Earth is billions of years old. I mean, how else would we see starlight that's billions of light years away? You want to see stars? (laughs) I have the answers you're looking for. Who's this guy? Danny Faulkner. Okay, I'm Googling Danny Faulkner. He works at Answers in Genesis. Lost He's a master's Danny. in physics from Clemson University and a PhD in astronomy from Indiana University. Yep. And he's the astronomer from the Genesis Paradise Lost Oh, well. Movie. Great. Perfect. I often wonder how these people with legitimate educations... What has to happen to you to get to the point that you're like, I'm just going to deny everything that I know to be true. All of the hard work I did to get to this point academically. Is it money? It's money, isn't it? Well, (laughs) I hate to attribute motive, but Uh, it sure seems like what's hard. What do you think is harder to do? Get regular publications into peer review or go to answers in genesis and just spew whatever and just say the bible's right the bible's right whatever ken ham says is true oh. and like i don't know what they get it's paid annoying. but i'm guessing the phds on staff at answers in genesis make more than the average phd in academia oh likely so yeah because the you know a phd in academia is still making paltry money like they do it because they like the science not because of course yeah absolutely yeah 
You don't see PhDs driving around in the Chevy Camaro Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> Jim is, though. Jim is. Actually, no, it was Derek. Derek was driving in in there. Yeah. But Jim, you know, he writes the signs. I know. Gets... That's another thing. Like, in this in this world, Derek is a night security guard driving a Camaro. <laughs> <laughs> That's... What's going on here? Yeah, you know, you're right. A lot of people have questions about distant starlight and time. Said, what's, this, going, what's, going, what's going on here? He never asked you a question. <laughs> you're right. A lot of people have questions about a thing. <laughs> <laughs> up Shannon that's a great question about brain nerves that you got there I know great question that you never asked me can't wait to delve into this more yeah you're probably wondering how if the universe is only thousands of years old how light from billions of light years could have gotten here exactly isn't that a big problem well not really oh <laughs> problem, solved. problem solved let's snap our fingers again to the next mm-hmm. exhibit no, no, you have to understand, first of all, that the light year is not a unit of time, it's a unit of distance. That doesn't matter at all. Who gives a shit? <laughs> That's not the problem. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> it takes a year for light to travel this distance. <laughs> and a year, if I'm not mistaken, is a unit of time. <laughs> <laughs> At least here on Earth. He's How do the- they reconcile this? And it's going to be magic, isn't it? It's going to be fucking magic. It's magic. <laughs> I'm calling it right now. No spoilers. It's magic. And when he created them, he knew that one day humans were going to be like, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense <laughs> that we've only been here for 6,000 years based on the lineage that we wrote down. And we know that light travels at a constant rate. Yeah. And and that's a measurement of distance. <laughs> the, ar- the argument is basically, are you telling me God couldn't do it this way? Well, of course he could. Like, if you posit something that answers everything yeah. by magicking shit, then you can answer literally every question and you gain nothing from that. Whatever. Go ahead. If I'm so right, I'm going to get another shooter. So that's how far away they are. That's correct. The Ooh. classic Han Solo problem in A New Hope where he was talking about parsecs as if they were time when they're really distance. It's a ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. Now we, how do we see it? How do we see it? Well, there's different possibilities. Some people suggest that the speed of light has not always been what it is today. Called it that. that, that <laughs> bah, bah, who suggested that? Why even put it in the movie? Danny Faulkner does not accept this hypothesis. Okay. Because if you change C, which is the... C is denotes the speed of light. Yeah. So like E equals MC squared mm-hmm. gets totally fucked up. Right. If you change the speed of light now, like every other property cascades different. Right. So Danny, this is very disingenuous because he does not hold to this hypothesis, but he's... Is that why he said some people say... He's just throwing it in. Oh, some people say this. So that that you know there's options. Right. His astrophysicist friends would laugh his ass out of the town if he held to it. Oh, for Christ's sake. Okay. Some people suggested relativistic uh, sort of solutions dealing with general relativity. Elaborate! (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) Could you you expound upon that, please? (laughs) What's the movie with Matthew McConaughey in where they have time being relative to things? What's that movie? I have no idea. You watch more movies than me. Where Matthew McConaughey is traveling at different speeds of time based on where he goes in the universe uh-huh. and people are like oh yeah there's that there's the theory of relativity maybe I'll think that's okay that they invented for this movie that's right <laughs> <laughs> the effect of gravity actually has an effect on time which they is actually a scientific thing okay but Danny's kind of conflating the things where it's actually time that changes not the speed of light that changes again he's throwing out theories that he doesn't hold to to make it seem like there's options well, there's a plethora of things that it could be yes, it not the just speed magic of light isn't constant. There's, there's A non-magic B non-magic and C magic <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, maybe God performed a miracle during the creation week to rapidly bring the light here. Now we're back to another miracle. And it's magic! (laughs) Or maybe God just did a miracle. Our drinking game should be every time an explanation involves magic. Uh, (laughs) Drink. Drink. Yeah, you know, the Big Bang model also has a miracle too. What? Yeah, there's a thing called the horizon problem. Early in the universe, getting light to travel across and bring the temperature of the universe to one single temperature. I've never heard of that. Yeah, you probably have. You probably haven't, but if anyone watches my channel, they definitely have, because in the in the Science of Genesis Paradise Lost movie, he proposed this as... So in science, it's actually called the horizon problem, which yeah. is a big bonus for creationists, because they're actually using the same name that scientists use. <laughs> <They don't like laughs> they didn't have to make up their own shit. But it's, it's a horizon problem in the same sense of, hey, here's a math problem. Yeah. It's not like, 
no one's ever figured out this math problem before. It's right. Like, but just here's a thing for someone to figure out. Mm-hmm. It's my understanding. I'm not a cosmologist, but that basically scientists have proposed that in the first several seconds of the Big Bang, that the expansion was actually faster than it was now. Now, obviously, we don't know exactly because we can't recreate history, but it yeah. actually does empirically it solves a lot of problems. The future data that it predicted, like the cosmic background radiation and several other things that I'm not remembering now because I drank monkey's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy I picked that. Exactly. Go to my video, which I will link the link above my head here, where I did explore this yeah, in so a more So the point is he's fashion. presenting it as though it's still a serious problem that no one has any answers for. And the fact of the matter is that the established science, which he sh- should know about as a PhD Correct. in this field, has actually come up with multiple solutions to this problem Correct. that make it no longer a problem. Right. So he's taking advantage of the fact that scientists call it still a problem, even right. though it's a solved problem. Right. This is annoying. Anyway, sorry. I'm going to sit here quietly. No, nope, we're going to let Danny tell us all about how cosmology works. Oh my God. We're in for the long haul. <laughs> I want to see uh, the arc one so bad. All okay, right. We're well, going to we'll, make it. We're we'll going to do through. it if we have to do this all night. So help me, Jesus, we're getting through <laughs> it. But they've tried to solve that with what we call cosmic inflation, though there's no evidence for it and nobody knows how it works. But people believe it anyway. But he just said it might be a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> he just said it might be miracle. Definitionally, there is no evidence for a miracle. I'm getting heated. But thank you, <laughs> but thank you, Danny. That was what it was called, cosmic inflation. So if I remember correctly, Alan Guth in 1979 proposed cosmic inflation, and it has since predicted future data. It says if cosmic inflation is true, then we should expect these future discoveries, of which cosmic background radiation was one of them. Okay, so there was a hypothesis that could so have been falsified. Hypothesis. That's right. But you can build predict- predictive models based right. on the... You, you can predict future data that will be found. Yeah. And it absolutely did. So when he says there's no evidence for it he's just wrong it's a predictive model kind of like dark energy is that a keeps model. that keeps giving results right. that right. reinforce that hypothesis exactly okay yeah i'm annoyed so the real question is creation if you believe that god created the universe i think you would agree that the light travel time problem is small potatoes by comparison it's <laughs> small potatoes it's not a problem if you just ignore it <laughs> you just pretend it's not a problem and believe anyway and it's, it's not a problem. It's not God of the gaps, but also God did it. <laughs> so just shh. Sh- 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 don't are worry about s- it. Are you saying God couldn't do it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you got a point there. What point does he have? <laughs> what point? I was disoriented because I was on a chair, but also you make a good point. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You guys really do have answers. Yes, we do. No, they don't. <laughs> nope. In Genesis. <laughs> You're not wearing any shoes. Nah, I don't like shoes. I don't like shoes either. I'm with him on that. Fuck, fuck shoes. Is I'm that also for? not wearing shoes. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> is this about? Is this so you can it? know what Lucy's feet look like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's better. I was thinking maybe a Die Hard reference. I don't know what's going well, on. Well, this is a Christmas movie. It is a Christmas movie. <laughs> That's going to be the most controversial <laughs> thing that we say. <laughs> Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Meet Ted. Oh, Teddy. Wake up, Derek. Ah, why? <laughs> God damn it. Why? Teddy, Teddy is terrifying. He's why? Apparently Canadian because he's wearing plaid. That's right. He's got a tuxedo watch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't this, understand. This has got to be an inside joke to somebody at Creation TA. I don't get I don't, I don't understand get what this is. If you know what this is, leave a comment in the yeah, comments. Explain because explain to us what the fuck. <laughs> How long is he slapping that one eye teddy bear? <laughs> Uh-oh, that ripple. It's like, that's this, this, this is the really Jurassic Park. <laughs> Look, get ready. Dinosaurs come alive. <laughs> Oh, no. no! That was like a puppet! <laughs> <laughs> nice! Look at that slide! <laughs> That's like a Dukes of Hazard across the hood you know, slide risky there. Risky business or something. Wow, we are old. <laughs> Those are old references. Yep. I kind of like this movie now. Ah! <laughs> 
<laughs> don't eat me. <laughs> don't eat me. Don't eat there. me. <laughs> you don't have to be afraid of these guys. They're all dead. Whoa. Ah. Meet Ebenezer. So there's actually a big controversy about that particular allosaur that he's standing behind. Why? What's the controversy? Montana is whoever owns the land gets to keep fossils. Oh, Whereas in, in Canada awful. and a lot of places in the States, if you find an important fossil, then the government, the government is, owns yeah. it even no matter who owns the land. But, Which makes sense so that you, science can study right. it. But yeah. in Montana, if you find a fossil on your land, it's yours. Oh, and so this guy, but if you're a dick, then you right, can just... Right, exactly. So this guy... So much stuff could be lost to science. Exactly. Because, oh, that sucks. So they get to have this artifice of, well, look, we also have this giant fossil. Oh, that sucks. So it kind of sucks. How do you think he became a fossil? Uh, well, he probably died. <laughs> Score one for Derek. <laughs> Probably died. <laughs> yep, nailed it. Uh, yeah. And then, um, well, you see what happens is uh, he lays there, and it takes like millions of years, but uh, leaves and uh, sticks, rocks, it, it, it kind of get buried on top of him, and uh, it gets super, super heavy, and then it <laughs> you're uh, squished into a fossil. Wow. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm super embarrassed, but this is actually not far off what I thought when I was a young Earth creationist. Really? What I thought, that evolutionists thought, that it took millions of years to get covered. No, it would. Ha it has to be covered rapidly. That's... Right, and that's what I. That was one of the first things. Which is I why learned. they're so rare. Otherwise, there'd be fossils all over the place. Exactly. Every scientist acknowledges that it, it takes rapid burial. Yes. For a fossil to happen. That's a required condition. There's yes. no cases where fossils happen because millions of individual leaves <laughs> Like a stick every right. two to three hundred exactly. years. Exactly. That is an accurate portrayal of what people think evolutionists think. Yeah, but Eric knows better and so does Tam. They, they both know, know better. But there's and he didn't even mention like mineralization. No, like, like at so, all. So, so how do they think fossils get made? A flood is required. A flood is ah, I could have I should have called that. I, that okay. I'll, I'll drink for that's, you. That's because my prediction. That's a, good, that's a good prediction. Floods are required. That's solid. Okay, you know he would have rotted away long before any of that happened. That's correct. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. You see, it doesn't take millions of years to form a fossil. It does though. It why does it? How can you <laughs> <laughs> Where minerals replace the bone. Yeah. Does take millions of years. Which is why you need to be buried rapidly. Right. In order for that to happen. Correct. Because it's essentially kind of like a diffusion, like an osmosis effect that takes place. Ooh, those are science words. <laughs> That's right. I didn't say flood though, so I'm wrong. <laughs> it just takes the right conditions. If you're going to play fast and loose with petrification versus actual permineralization. It's not the same thing though. Which I didn't pronounce correctly, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to pronounce words no. correctly. Yeah, minerals don't replace the bone in thousands of years. That takes millions of years. Yeah. They need to be buried rapidly in mud or other sediments. You see, fossils are found all around the world right. in what we call sedimentary layers, which were laid right. down by water. No, no. Fuck. So water is one way that sedimentary layers get laid down, mm -hmm. but they also get laid down by gravity or wind, or yeah. uh, anything that moves particles around, or plate tectonics, all those kind of things, it doesn't require water. But it does, though, Paul. It requires water. Well, He yeah. just said it did. But okay, Tim. It's probably Jim, common. Jim, Jim, Tim. <laughs> Jim. Jim and you have Jim and me. <laughs> Jim and Jaffy. Oh, uh, that's a callback to something I don't even remember what it is. <laughs> Well, to be fair, Jim, James, Jimothy, to be fair, Jimothy. So you have these fossil layers all around the world. Right, yeah. Well, you know what that means, right? Well, yeah, the, uh, that means the... Uh, uh, all around the world. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, rock layers laid down by water. Or wind or other things. And also, even if he's, like, let's say he's right. Let's live in a world where Jimothy here is, <laughs> is, is saying things that are accurate. Correct. You know what there is a lot of? Water. All around the world, <laughs> right? <laughs> Why does it require one flood? Right, that's the... That's one the, flood. Exactly. That Floods is... are not, they're mundane events. 
So even in a world where his theory, and I'm not saying it's right because it's really fucking wrong, right. but even in a world where his theory is right, it doesn't require a worldwide flood. It just requires water to be present near animals that die. Exactly. That is, Which is, I mean, pretty common. Like, their dichotomy is either there were zero floods... Or there was one flood. Or there was one fucking huge <laughs> Right. <laughs> Remember when sense. we went to the Royal Terrell Museum together? Uh, we and went we a saw, couple of times. Yeah, we saw yep. the, the Ankylosaur, I think that's the name of it, that was like that was mm-hmm. preserved by a flood mm-hmm. that had happened in a very local part of Alberta. Yeah, absolutely. And they, they can kind of get a sense of that it was a very local flood, but it mm-hmm. covered that one dinosaur. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but... But... The Bible says That's right. there was a flood, right. so we need to explain fossils by using a flood, so... That's what happened. Water, yep, so, yep, they, uh... With lots of dead things. Of course, yep, so all around the world. Yeah, multiple floods all over the world. <laughs> or literally all of the other conditions required for fossilization that aren't always floods. But K. <laughs> but all right then. That means that there was a worldwide flood, just like described in the book of Genesis, which is found in the Bible, the history book of the universe. The history book of the universe. The history book of <laughs> the, the universe. They should. They would sell more copies. I mean, I know there's a number <laughs> one thing in the world, but they're probably decreasing in sales. So they think you know the subtitle, the history book of the universe. The Hitchhiker's Guide to Worldwide Threads. Right. <laughs> this is the worst Captain America movie I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't like Winter Soldier, but this is worse. <laughs> this is worse. Winter Soldier is my favorite, by the way. It is good. I like Winter Soldier. Yeah. Uh, whoa. Welcome to Biblical Archaeology. Wow. Biblical Archaeology? Oh, yeah. One of my favorites. You know, skeptics routinely say that the Bible can't be trusted, that all the events and people described in there are just made up hundreds of years later. I do say that, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, a, that's the most accurate thing that they've said about skeptics so far. Take, for example, David. For years, skeptics have said David never even existed. It's just that some scribe made him up hundreds of years later. They wanted to have something like a King Arthur legend, so they view him kind of like that, just to give him a rich history. And then they found the Teldan Stila. And you know what it talks about? It mentions the House of David. This is from 850 BC, about 150 years after David's lifetime. We've also found the Misha Stila, which mentions the House of David and the House of Omri, which would have been Israel. So, I don't know how much you know about biblical Hebrew, I'm going to go with nothing. <laughs> Zero. But biblical Hebrew has no vowels. So you've probably heard that before. Yes, like I have. Dr. Because Josh I, and things. Because have... I'm friends with Josh That's and right. Megan from Digital Amurabi, yes. So they have no vowels. So David in biblical Hebrew would be equivalent to, because there's no vowels, it's basically D-W-D. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's no word breaks in biblical Hebrew either. Okay. So... These are very controversial finds that Jimothy here is talking about. <laughs> this, this Jimothy here is talking about. So, basically, the EWD with no word breaks at all. The Tell Dan Steel, basically, everyone's like, well, no, there's lots of ways to read those in a different way that doesn't say House of David. Of course, even if it did, like, the fact that there was a House of David doesn't mean that, that oh, like therefore, mean David and Goliath happened. Therefore, this specific David, right. with this mythology surrounding him... Everything about him is right. true as depicted in the Bible. Like, that doesn't follow. But even if so, the, as I understand it, the Hebrew experts say that the DWD that found in the steel, if you if you do different word breaks differently, it makes perfect sense without referring to House of David. Okay. So maybe it refers to House of David, maybe it doesn't. And then the other one he talks about, the, the Misha steel. Yeah. That one, the first D in the DWD, doesn't even exist. Like, it's broken. Like, you can't even see. Okay. So it's just a WD at the start of the sentence. And they're like, well, what if D was there? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, okay. of course, like, so for, uh, other people have said, well, if you put a B there, then it would refer to, like, King Balak, who was a king right, of Israel. Time. So there's just lots of ways these can be interpreted. Like, I feel the same way about the Jesus of mm-hmm. the Bible. Even if there was a dude that existed, it's clearly been mythologized right. to an extent that's very obvious. Right. So there could have been someone important named David. Maybe he was even a king. Yeah. I don't care. Right. That doesn't indicate to me that the Bible was true, nor that everything that was written in the Bible about him or his life exactly. is true. Yeah. 
it, 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 that just doesn't follow. And there could be a House of David that's not even con- in, at all related Absolutely. to the David exactly. that you see depicted in the right. Bible. We could go back to 1930s and say, hey, I did a, a record check in New York City, and there was a guy named Bruce Wayne. Therefore, Batman's real. Batman is Batman real. Is real. <laughs> it's like, well, no, that's not. Yeah, no, it doesn't follow. No. Remember Goliath? <laughs> oh, yeah, Gigantor. Actually, he was a lot bigger than me. Oh, but he was from the city of Gath, and archaeologists have been excavating Gath. And in 2005, they found this potsherd, and it has two names on there that are nearly identical to the name Goliath. Did you catch that? Two names that are nearly identical to the name Goliath? Nearly. Not that Goliath was named twice. But there's, but there's, there's names two names that, that are, are similar nearly. Enough. That's right. Like, so the existence of someone named Sharon lends credence to Shannon Q's channel somehow. That's the equivalent right. to what they're. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Jimothy. <laughs> I, like that. I love that that's stuck. <laughs> so all these stories are true? Of course they're true. Of course they're true. Somebody named Goliath or something similar <laughs> may have existed at some point in time. Of course. So obviously somebody killed him with a slingshot. <laughs> <laughs> what else could you glean from this information? Have you seen this pot? There's a name similar to Goliath written on this pot. Well, it's not a whole pot. It's a part of a pot. <laughs> this, but... this pot fragment has a name similar to Goliath written on it. Like, what, what? I mean, what would you deduce from this information? <laughs> it seems like every single time a skeptic wants to deny the, the historicity of, of one of these key figures or events, archaeology uncovers the evidence for them. I don't really think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that every time one of us says something... I don't even think that this time... That <laughs> no, not even this time. It didn't even happen this time. Tell me about Moses, Jimothy. <laughs> but there was wheels in a river. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> you know that there oh. was wheels, wagon wheels in a river. Actually, it's funny because that's what Jonah says. Is like even they're like, no, those no. wheels aren't true. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a bridge too far, yes, even yeah. for AIG. <sighs> Kent, Garrick's dad though was all on the wheels. He loves the yeah. river wheels, man. Whoa! Look at that special effect, though. That's pretty, that's decent. Like, I'm le- like legit. Yeah, like he's We're in... filming this entire thing on a Samsung Galaxy cell phone? Yeah. I mean, an Eric's... Props. In, mad props to him, There's man. two Eric's in this shot. And it's not just because we're best friends. That's right. Or at least I thought we were best friends until you and him started being text buddies and he never talks to me. That's right. That's he was, fine. He, he was just using you to get to me. Yeah, fuck your face. <laughs> Probably true, though. Probably true. I mean, doesn't Sarah want Ricky to know about this? I want to be great if you were the one who got to show him this. Shouldn't you be the one to indoctrinate your child? <laughs> Wouldn't your estranged wife want you to indoctrinate your child? Maybe that's why your relationship didn't work. Because you don't have the truth. Didn't your, didn't your mom believe all of this? Yeah. Yeah, she was... A- she was a believer. So I know, you know, evolution makes sense, but if we give you guilty feelings, you'll think the creationism <laughs> is true. I almost spit out my drink. That's what, that, that's what this amounts to, though. Yeah. If this was a movie about evidence, they wouldn't have a backstory that is emotional manipulation. Oh, a lot of apologetics yeah. just in general is emotional manipulation. That's infuriating to me. Grr. She didn't want you to blame God for her death. They said, were just in the hall of shitty things that have happened. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> And he said, have you had somebody has something bad happened? And he said, yeah, my mom died of cancer. But he's not a believer in this scenario. So he's not blaming God. He's like, he he doesn't believe in God. No, but the Christian narrative is that if you don't believe in God, you hate God. But you don't believe in God. I don't hate the tooth fairy. Even though she steals teeth and that's weird. <laughs> because I don't think she We're not exists. kid shaming, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like because I don't think she exists. I don't no. have feelings about her. I think the character Derek here Isn't actually that? does believe in God. He's just he's just angry. angry. Right he's now. just really suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. Right. Yeah. yeah, gotcha. Because that's the only way. Because Romans one twenty or whatever. Good reference. Yeah. She wanted you to know her creator. Your creator. What are you going to decide? What will it be? You can't decide now because there's a part two. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. it, would, it would ruin the continuity That's right. of, the, of the, what did we call this? The, du- the duology? duology. <laughs> duology. That's right. 
<laughs> I'm hoping they that... They need the, an additional museum is what they need. So right. This could be a proper trilogy. I'm hoping that the Ark intended. Encounter is the Godfather 2 to this, that it's a, the, the rare, <laughs> it's the rare sequel well, that the improves. second one is better than yeah, the first the, one, yeah. It's the Empire Strikes Back of the... <laughs> <laughs> one more Star Wars reference, I swear to God, I'm leaving. All right, fine. Whoa! I mean, I can relate to that. I'm 40, and sometimes I sleep well. <laughs> that's, right. right. that's the most relatable thing that's happened. That's right. Injured my sleep. I slept so... in a bad position, and now I need to go to the doctor and take some medication. Probably won't be the same again yeah. for the rest of my life. <laughs> what was that? What? Don't... Found it. <laughs> Morning. Morning. How did everything go last night? Oh, great. I mean, you know... Nothing got in, nothing got out. I think if creationism had a theme, nothing got in, nothing got out. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Could be a t-shirt. No ideas got in no and no ideas, ideas got, got out. out. Yeah. I want to give you this. It's a 3D movie on the creation of the world. Oh, it's his. It's Eric's fucking movie. <laughs> Oh my god. Product placement, product, product placement. Product placement, product placement. Here, look, I, it's, it's, it's a DVD too. It should be a digital download. I mean, although I suppose their audience probably still has Oh no, DVD no, their audience so. totally. And not even Blu ray. We had VHS, but they're out of stock. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, does Ricky like to read? Yeah, he does. I mean, he's not big into like, you know. School reading, but, but fiction. Oh, love fiction. fiction. We've got a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> the creation museum. <laughs> My We've son doesn't like learning, <laughs> <laughs> but he loves dinosaurs. Do you have any fiction about dinosaurs? We sure do. I think he's really gonna enjoy the Truth Chronicles. Wow. Oh, do you know what that is? No, I have no idea what that is. Jimothy wrote a book series. <laughs> <laughs> so this is more... This is a book by Tim Chafee. This is Equal Opportunity Product Placement. So the... Here's the movie you made, and here's the book I wrote. So... <laughs> wow. Wow. That, and... that further goes to show my theory that all AIG-related productions are essentially just fluff yeah. wrapped around product placement. Yeah. Every single one of them. If the Bible were enough, you wouldn't need any of this stuff. You wouldn't need a huge-ass bookstore. That's right. Tonight, we could really use you down at the Ark Encounter. Oh, good, there's a part two. Fantastic, They're, he's going to the Ark Encounter. Hey, Sarah, is Ricky gonna be ready? I'll see you at 7.30. Oh man, is he gonna bring a kid? Is there a kid involved in this? I don't think so, no children were harmed in the film. <laughs> I would like it if this car would turn into a robot. That would be awesome, if that really was Bumblebee, I would be so pissed off that Eric got that privilege. <laughs> And we're done. And we are done. We're done part one. Okay. All right. This is a good time for us to take a break. Break time. And then we will take a shot at the start of the next one. Is that what's going to happen? I we're going to do so. a shot. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm ready. Let's go take a break. I hope you'll join me next week as we experience night at the Ark Encounter. God bless.